thanks for checking out Pretty Heady Stuff. I don't want to bore you too much with an explanation of the podcast's central concept or purpose. I'm going to be pursuing this interest in how writers write, uh, how public speakers and teachers speak to audiences, uh, and in general how communicators can communicate effectively. I've titled the podcast Pretty Heady Stuff because I'm interested in ideas and how to communicate them, especially complex ideas, and it's a difficult problem. Uh, In this episode, I'm going to be speaking with Box Brown, who's one of my favorite writers of graphic fiction. He writes primarily graphic nonfiction, so it's work that is is steeped in research, that is making a concrete point, is often, in fact, arguing for a reevaluation of some of our established ways of thinking about popular culture, drugs, and so on. I do hope you'll enjoy this conversation. The, the first one is sort of a long one. Uh, it's about uh, your book, Is This Guy For Real?, uh, which I've just finished reading. And in the conclusion of the book, you, you jump out of the flow of, of the kind of narrative of Kaufman's life and, and return to the present to sort of talk about writing the book and specifically your relationship to the biopic Man on the Moon. At the center of, it, it, center of that movie is Jim Carrey's, you know, supposedly you know, magnetic performance and so on. Your book, though, is critical of that movie and says it kind of misunderstands Kaufman's whole, really, who he is and his drive to do comedy. And I'm wondering why you made the choice to directly engage with that film, whether it was important to uh, critique that other account of his life by using Michael Kaufman's, you know, uh, appraisal of it, and whether you agree with that assessment. Um, Were you trying to correct that kind of mainstream notion of who Kaufman was when you wrote the book? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, what? Uh, my touchstone probably to Andy Kaufman surrounds the movie. Uh, I didn't know. I mean, I, I started finding out who he was once that movie. I don't know if it had started coming, if it had come out yet or if they were in the process of making it. But it was like around that time period where they started reviving uh, Andy's career by showing his films and stuff on Comedy Central. Mm hmm. And so that was like my first access to his work. And what drew me to it is his was his pro wrestling stuff because I was like a huge pro wrestling fan. Mm-hmm. And so um so that's that was my introduction. Um in in the book, uh when I was telling his story, I kind of got up to that point. And in my research I I I couldn't help but noticing I remember when it came out, when the movie came out, and they kept, everyone was giving Jim Carrey such such amazing, um, you know, acclaim for mm-hmm. his performance. And the more I heard about uh, Jim Carrey's behavior on set, and also, um, also like, uh, just what I learned about Andy is that he didn't do a good performance. Um, his whole entire... I mean, he was a great mimic of Andy. Like, he got him on a surface level, like, very well. But when he describes the way that he thought that Andy approached comedy, he was actually just describing the way he himself approached comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he saw... I don't think he was actually doing Andy. He was doing himself. And when I asked, when I asked uh, Andy's brother about it, he uh, had a lot to say about it. So uh, it was, I felt like it was something that was going to come up in this, in this story. And it might have been, might have been something that would get, uh, the book would get compared to a lot. Um, so uh, I did want to put that in there. I, I, th- I thought that it would be. A chance. It was also a segue in the interview with his brother um, for him to to kind of talk about how much he loved his brother. And, and that was like what was charming and um, uh, uh, charming and, and, and raised mm-hmm. up a lot of sympathy for for Andy in the book. Um, so, yeah. And, and, you know, I was moving in, in that in the storytelling, you know, I was moving towards the end of the book. Um, and not, it, it's, I never know how I'm going to end these things. And, um, you, it's hard, you know, you're, you're looking for a, a way to like lower the plane, you know, and like, 
make a safe landing and not like a just dive right into oh it's over and uh, he's dead and and whatever so i just saw that as a, as a way to a, a good way to segue into the denouement of the book also yeah i think graphic novels are often sort of cinematic but the thing that you do at the end is it feels more like a documentary in a sense um and yeah. and, and what i you know what i loved about this book is is how you weave it together and and not only how you sort of um identify with his love of wrestling but also his love of elvis like just sinking so much into this it like clearly almost you know at times compulsive love of of something pop cultural at this point i wonder you know how how you choose your your subject matter right like what kind of motivates you is it more intellectual or artistic it, when you find a subject is it about trying to explore ideas about human behavior certainly you do that so much in tetris or is it is it just trying to make a story i think my approach is usually um uh both of those things um mm -hmm. I, you know there's with with in movies you kind of there's kind of like two ends of the spectrum right there's like a documentary film and then there's like a movie that's that's uh, based on a true story, um, which is mm -hmm. like could be any. You know what I mean? Like right. that, at that point, it's totally artistic license, and you sure. could do anything. So um, I'm always like trying to strike some sort of balance between those two things. And I, I, I'd say I'm mostly influenced by documentary, uh, but there's no discounting the narrative structure and storytelling of uh film as it relates to comics because a lot of times you're using the same types of um composition and things like that as far as choosing subjects um it, there's a lot of different different reasons I mean, it's usually something that i had a uh, extreme personal connection with the andy kaufman story was not quite the same um as it was, as much as it was, I got to know Bill after uh, before I started working on the Andy Kaufman book, and uh, Bill after, who was um, um, the editor in chief of Pro Wrestling Illustrated for a long time, uh, and is like a legend among wrestling fans. Uh, um, when Andre the Giant the book came out, he invited me over to his house, and I did a little interview on his show and he, he he told me about how he had introduced uh andy kaufman to jerry lawler and um and he appears in the book and stuff uh and that th that having access to bill mm -hmm. um and uh knowing about andy kaufman and um and wrestling and thinking and, and knowing about how uh, i didn't think that Andy's wrestling career was really uh, told, has ever really been told. Like, no one really understands that he was actually really good at this and all this. That It wasn't until I had explored that a lot that I was like, oh, and then so, and then maybe, you know, I, I wanted to do something about a comedian and Andy Kaufman's name came up. And, um, and I had this, I knew I'd known knew Bill after, and I kind of had this background in wrestling. And, and I thought I had could take a unique look at Annie's life by, by highlighting that. Um, but, but Andre the Giant and, and Tetris, really, um, were both things that I had a strong emotional connection to as a child. Um, and and um, I'm often exploring the things that, um that i was obsessed with as a child uh and uh and uh, and and i'm uh, just really interested in how um how childhood affects adulthood and um how um you know the way people get obsessed with their own childhoods and nostalgia mm -hmm. things like that and i'm just like um me too i'm uh, fascinated by that stuff but I think, you know, what your book suggests is that um, you can do something akin to documentary in 
a format that sometimes is seen as frivolous, like comic books. Uh, you know, that's what interests me certainly about your work is that it does have this kind of serious focus. It, it's interested in, you know, using research to f kind of figure out what the lesson of comedy is, what the lesson of video games uh, might be. How do you string together the details? How do you provide a sense of the larger context? How do you, how do you get to a point where you can convey that narratively? It's it's funny. It's often, you know, you have, I have maybe like one statement that I want to make and it takes me like a hundred pages of background to get to, of context mm -hmm. to get to the point where I can make the statement. And then the end of the book is me extrapolating on the statement. So uh, I don't know, like it really, is, it starts with an idea and I kind of work backwards. Um, I start somewhere and then I go, what, what is the, what is the uh, like extreme beginning of this? Hmm. So that's why in Tetris we're looking at starts in, you know, caves. Yeah, literally. And Andy, Andy Kaufman too, it's like how far in this, person's life do you go back to his mm -hmm. um it reminds but, me of charlie kaufman's adaptation right his his attempt to faithfully adapt susan orlean's book yeah uh, has him conceive of you know representing the entire history of of the Absolutely. earth right? it reminds yeah. me of that every time it's always yeah uh, where do we start where do we begin beginning of time where's the beginning of time and it's <laughs> like and the fox mm -hmm. is is just like consumed by maggots like it's just yeah this, right. this crazy imagery, but, but, you know, sometimes I think you do have to do that. Like, you have to like boil down people to their basic humanity uh, to make sure everyone can connect to somebody as you know uh, as eccentric as like an Andy Kaufman. I wanted to ask also about this notion that um, graphic fiction has a unique capacity to. Uh, allow the audience to engage with images of violence, especially that make it not just about shock and all this kind of stuff. And and I think your work kind of falls into that that category, right? This kind of devastating way that you represent uh, a man that ended up being a family killer, um, you know? Thing. Yeah, so it's a way to talk about mm -hmm. difficult subjects. The using symbols of, of violence with that full depiction to get to the get to the uh, the emotions and stuff behind it, right? Because I don't want to, I personally don't want to depict violence, right? Like, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of ways I could have drawn the Pohilko, um, uh, you know, family murder. Mm -hmm. but, but I didn't want to do that. And that also was not totally where the book was at all. But it was very important to the story. And it, by, I, I didn't want to be afraid to talk about it purely because it was hard to talk about. Um, uh, because I think that's how trauma builds up, right? Is mm. by avoiding the difficult subjects and, and kind of tiptoeing around them rather than facing them, even though they're difficult. So I think you're right. Like um, comics allows us uh, to talk about these ideas and engage with them in a way that's not as frightening and it's not as traumatic uh to view because it's just it's symbol it's it's a it, it symbols to portray it rather than actual images it's interesting though like at this book that i'm working on now that i was working on today uh is about uh like the television sitcom of the 1980s and uh some of the stuff that I was depicting in my book is like based on real things that happened. And the things that really they really showed in the sitcoms were too much for me to depict. I, I softened my depiction down from what actually happened because it was too creepy to mm -hmm. draw that stuff. Like, like there's an episode of Different Strokes that involves a pedophile where there's so the depiction of pedophilia is is uh, almost criminal like I, I, they would never just do it now so but at the same time i think that um 
you you can kind of approach those things with comics in a way that doesn't that that you can spare the viewer from trauma in the way that a movie can't that's realistically depicting violence couldn't do and in a way that's what wrestling is about i mean wrestling the kind of moral play of it right. is about playing out these tensions in society right um and you can you, you can say that at times wrestling is too extreme in playing out these kinds of tensions sure. but like that's sort of what it's for at least and it, and it kind of leads into another question that i i had about your your book uh is this guy for real you know, there's something about Kaufman's comedy that is, you know, interesting for this reason, right? He's fascinated by yeah. the mystery of an audience just completely accepting the the right. kind of the, the, yeah, yeah. the oh, performance. Yeah. I mean, this is this is a hundred percent what Kaufman was interested in. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, and it's 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 so much in our culture today because you see it like any once you understand what the concept of um, kayfabe and what right pro wrestling does and like what how, how they are all working together to to uh display a certain certain things that have kind of have whatever connotation they they want it like <laughs> you can't really view politics in any other way after that um you start seeing things and you're like this is kayfabe this isn't a shoot you know <laughs> all these yeah. things and so uh and so uh, Andy Kaufman played with that all the time. So people were constantly saying, is this, you know, is this a shoot? Is this for real? Like, is this, it's, it's the same thing with pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I wanted to talk about I, that uh, goes back to your earlier question, though, is that the high-low thing is so essential to, um, I think, to comics in general, but especially my comics, because... Mm -hmm. It it is something that uh, immediately um, disarms the the reader. The, uh, the 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 art form itself, comics, makes mm -hmm. people. Uh, and I'm constantly pushing against this, but I use it. But if it if it was gone, I, I it would hurt my comics. I think that uh, I'm always pushing for people to take comics seriously. Uh, but me too. But if they took them seriously from right off the bat, I think it would lose something because when when the person that picks up the comic uh, is sat sits down and is ready for a comic mm -hmm. uh, and they and then you give them something real, they it's like an extra smack in the face. <laughs> you know? I know what you mean, yeah. Like, yeah. if people don't go to a stand-up routine expecting a lecture, like, you can do that, like, once or twice. You can break the genre. Hannah Gatsby, they've Hannah broken, Gatsby. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but not everybody, I think, right? Like, there is still, yeah. there, are, there, are, there are rhetorical or, or generic kind of expectations, certainly. Um, yeah, I, I take and your point. Like yeah. the, the, the media, or, like, the language of comics itself, even if you're you, talking about something serious, just lends itself to a, 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 just a, a, I don't know even how to describe it, like an easygoing conversation because the language of comics is so playful mm -hmm. and and uh, so like easy to follow and reminiscent of childhood and and fun and things like that mm -hmm. uh, that it just allows for an easy easier path into into any subject really you know i wanted to ask you what features you appreciate most about this genre of graphic biography and whether there are specific books that you always go back to uh for inspiration i think that um Dur durf's book uh, my friend Dahmer. um mm. like i mean he was in such a really specific situation where he was in high school with this with this figure jeffrey Dahmer, right but he, what he did and the way he did it, uh, I think, is is such a good lesson on how to tell these stories. Um, he he didn't really have much of a story, right? He mm -hmm. had he only had like a few anecdotes about once in a while seeing this kid, and he was able to through research and through 
his, you know, his the comic, the way he tells a story using images on comics to extrapolate an entire book's worth of of stuff on it, and and it was it's something that shined a new light on a, on a story we thought we we knew everything about. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's. Uh, I think that is is a real triumph uh, for like the genre 